Hello, James here from Cobra Engineering. Today we finally finished up the crank stud modification video where we, I show you how to drill and tap the crank to accept the larger stud. We install it on this engine that's going to end up in this car eventually, I promise. So let's dive right in and get, get going. So here you can see we got a crank, we got all the tools we used, the hardware, and a, a normal ARP harmonic balancer bolt. As you see, the problem is very simple. This bolt only goes this far at best. Then there's a washer and sometimes the dampener's out a little bit. That's not going to cut it because you can see this undercut on the crank. It's got a little undercut on it. That's a small crank. That's where we get a lot of issues. So what we do is we drill and put this stud all the way back to here. Now we're pulling back here, not up here, when we tighten that dampener down. That's a big difference. So it's very simple. You're using a 916 drill and you're taking this out. You're taking all the old threads out. You're bringing that back. I'll put the drawing up to show exactly. This, of course, will be on cobratechtalk.com. And then you're using the drill for the tap. And this, you're going, you're trying not to break into this oil main, but you might. Not a big deal. You know, and then your 916 12 tap. And you're tapping back here. I'll put the video up now and show you what I did it on the lathe. This is the only time I've ever done it myself. I usually just have a machine shop do it. It was actually pretty easy once you set up the steady rest. So here you see I'm starting with the 9 16 drill. Basically just pecking away at it. Getting that steady rest dead nuts with a dial indicator is what's most important. You, this hole needs to be square and straight. I got it marked with tape how deep once I hit that, move on to the 3164. This is the one I decided to use for the tap that I had. Same thing, many pecks in and out, oil, I'm blowing it out the hole. And here I'm trying to determine, I was also trying to determine if uh, I went through. I started that tap in the tail stock to make sure it was straight about two threads and then moved to a hand tap so I could feel it and make sure I didn't snap that tap off. Here I pecked with the tap in and out just like the drill. And then the only other thing you're gonna have to do is this washer. I'll put all these part numbers on Cobra Tech Talk also. It's gonna be too big a diameter most likely. It's the right inner diameter. So you might have to cut the OD down depending on your dampener. Or if you have this washer, you can open the hole to a 9 16 Those are actually very hard. I wouldn't try using a drill bit. I would try to use a lathe or something. That's why cutting the OD for me is a little easier. I'll actually put that on the stud and run a nut on either side to clamp it, put that in the lathe, cut the outside. You can see the nut. Like I said previously, a little thread sealer on there. That goes all the way in. This one isn't drilled. And we torque that down. Now see here, it's all set up. Now this one with the Innovator's West Balancer, I had to use a five and a quarter inch stud, where this is a four and three quarter, which would be more normal. I believe the hub on the balancer is a little longer, but I'll put both part numbers up. It's about a half inch difference, not that big a deal. A little bit sticking out here, but because we don't have the, the stock lower pulley, we don't have to worry about any interference in the middle. With the stock lower pulley, you're going to have to worry about that. You want the shorter stud. All right, here you can see I got the front cover off the engine still, but I've got everything degreed. I got our Shelby Mike billet guides. I've got a billet. Uh, reluctor wheel and what we're trying new on this engine are these diamond claw washers these are only 10 thou thick there's one behind 
the main crank sprocket to the crank. So that's sandwiched between there. Then I have one between that crank sprocket, the reluctor wheel, and final one will be between the reluctor wheel and the dampener. Notice I got the key extended all the way out. That's the full length of this hub for this dampener. That keyway is a full cut keyway. I'm only running one keyway with these washers. I don't want to weaken the crank with a second keyway. In theory, with these washers, you almost don't even need a key. They're basically diamond impregnated, and it's almost, just think of it as sandpaper between the two. You're not going to be able to rotate that. Of course, with the added torque of a 916 stud that's going in there. As we previously showed, that's going to go in. Put a little thread sealer on here in case you broke through, like I talked about previously, into the oil main on the crank. Not a big deal, you just make sure there's no chips or anything in there or anything that's gonna get in your oil system, obviously. You thread seal that, and of course you're gonna use a little RTV on the back of the washer and the nut when you put it on because that's what's gonna keep oil from weeping through your system. Now, I'm gonna put the front cover on. Don't forget your dabs of RTV in four spots. Actually six, not including the valve covers. But these four are regularly forgotten by people because you can see where the head gasket gap is there. Don't forget that when you put the front cover on. All right, here you see I buttoned it all up. This isn't a video on how to put a front cover on. I think you can figure that out. We didn't need all that. How to put a dampener on. Use the appropriate tool. Don't use the impact. Or at least don't tell anyone you use the impact to put it on. I use thread sealant on the stud, and the stud is tightened by hand, not torqued into the crank. RTV on the back of the washer, and the back of the nut to the washer. We don't want any oil seeping out of there and thinking that we got some serious issues when it's just we forgot to put the RTV on there, or silicone. And I run that nut down, and then I used two old bolts on the back of the crank from a flywheel or you know whatever you got and a nice pry bar and I wedged between those two nuts and the standoffs on the back of my engine stand and I propped it really good and I got 160 foot pounds of torque on that. That's ARP's general torque rating for a 916 stud. Now remember we got this diamond claw sandwiched in there at 160 foot pounds between this, the reluctor wheel, the crank sprocket, and the crank itself. We got one full length key, full length, all the way front to back on all those components independently. That's a billet steel boundary crank gear. We got a billet steel reluctor wheel, and we got a billet steel hub on our Innovators West balancer. We got a chance. We all know the cranks are too small on these engines, but we got a chance. This is the best we could do short of making a billet crank, and we all know we don't want to spend that kind of money. This is going to be a lot more cost effective. Well, there we go. We got this engine all together. We got the stud in there. We're not going to let this blower break that crank snout off, are we? Well, we gave it a chance anyway. The best chance we could without going to a billet crank or anything extreme. I sure appreciate you watching, and as always, you can write me at james at techtalk.com and make any suggestions for videos and I promise I'm going to try to get a lot more out. I've been really slacking. Sorry about that. Thanks for watching.